Do you have a bucket list? You know that list of things that you hope to do before you die, whether it's experiences like going skydiving or whether it's going somewhere to see some certain part of the world. Do you have that list of things that you want to do? So I think a lot of us have, whether it's written down or not, whether it's just in our heads or in our hearts, we have these sort of things that we want to do before we die. A my list of my life and what I want to do. But today we're going to see how retirement can become an idol in our lives. Welcome back to the idols of today. This is the last one in our series where we're looking at and exploring the different things of life that are and can be idols in our heart and soul. Today we're ending with retirement. And I know watching this you might say, Hey, Pastor, you're 30 something years old and you want to talk to me about retirement? You're right, I'm not retired. But I promise you, I know a lot of retired people. And when I know those people, when I talk to them, when I see them, I can tell you those people who live retirement as the idol that it can be, and those people who live retirement in what I would say is a faithful way of following Jesus. It seems obvious to me sometimes. It's one of those things you walk away with and you say, that person gets it. But it's not just a feeling that I have. It's not just something that I come up with in my mind. Jesus talks about this parable of a rich landowner. And while it might not be explicitly about retirement, at least the American dream retirement, I think it applies. So listen, in Luke 12, Jesus says this. Some crowd came up to Jesus and said, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But Jesus said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbiter between the two of you? Then he said to them, Watch out and guard yourself from all types of greed, because one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. He then told them a parable. The land of a certain rich man produced an abundant crop. So he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. Then he said this, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and then I will store all my grains and goods. And I will say to myself, you have plenty of goods stored up for many years. Eat, relax, drink, celebrate. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded back from you. But who will get what you have prepared for yourself? So it is with the one who stores up riches for himself, but is not rich towards God. These words especially. The person says to himself, you have plenty of goods stored up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and celebrate. Isn't that what the American dream of retirement is all about? Relaxing, eating, drinking, and celebrating? It's not that those things are necessarily wrong in themselves, but it's this mindset, right? That retirement can become this idle for us when we look to it to give us happiness, to give us joy as, as somehow we have finally earned the ability to completely check out, to completely do whatever we want, to in a small way become a God over our own lives. That no more do we have to listen to the boss, no more do we have to listen to the time clock anymore, and instead we get to choose, we get to decide. But in this parable, that rich man is reminded who's in control. And the sad reality is, as so many of you know too, that sometimes that's exactly what happens to us too. That when we put all of our eggs, when we look so forward to retirement and we work so hard to get there, that then we neglect and we miss out on all the opportunities along the way and suddenly this thing that we've been waiting for and yearning for so long doesn't ever come and it never lives up to what we thought it could be. And in those moments of disappointment, in those moments of grief, that idol of retirement is revealed for what it is. An idol, unable to give to you and I what we so desperately desire. And so when what is retirement? How do we live it faithfully? 
well, it's not a time to check out. It's not a time to completely abandon all the things that we used to do. Instead, it's very similar to the rest of life. That while now our responsibilities are changed and are different, we still ask similar questions. Like, how am I a good steward of my time? How am I a good steward of my talent? How am I a good steward of my treasures now? And in retirement, all of those things change because we steward all three of them at the same time together all the time. And so retirement then looks like doing those things in a different way. Because ultimately, the Bible doesn't use the language of retirement. The only retirement that's in the Bible is death. Paul says it best that for me, to die is gain, but to live is Christ. And that it's far better to be with Christ, to go away from the body. But if he is in the body, then he's going to live and serve doing what God has called him to do. And so as you seek that day of retirement, enjoy the fruit of your labor, right? You have worked this many years to be able to take time to stop. It's how society functions. But don't let it become an idol in your life. It is not God. It can't give you true happiness, true peace, true rest. Only Jesus can. Instead, think about it as just another opportunity for you to be a steward, for you to be Jesus to your family, to your friends, and to your neighbors, in all that you think, in all that you say, and in all that you do. So as you think about this, whether you are 2, 20, 80, or somewhere in between, Think about the ways in which you've seen people who've retired. How those people live their retirement well and used it for the sake of their neighbor, for the sake of their faith and their family. How have other people maybe used it more for themselves? And how will that change the way you do it? And then as you think about your own faith too, what does it look like to live retirement knowing that God has and will provide for you in all things? And that there really is no such thing as the end. Because we're people of eternity. And so while we might have bucket list for this side of eternity, we know that there is one coming that is far greater and far longer than anything we have on this side of heaven. Let me pray for you as we consider this thing this day. Lord Jesus, you warn of greed. You warn of trusting in our own selves, in our own providing and provision. And so I pray that you would help us see, help us trust that you will provide for us each and every single day, just as you have so far. And so whether we are near to retirement, whether we are just approaching it, or whether we are well into it, I pray that you would allow us to see and to live in a faithful way that lives not for ourselves, but instead for those around us, for those who need us, for those who need our love, who need our care, who need our service. Inspire us and give us the faith that we need to take steps to be your hands and your feet in whatever situation we find ourselves in in life, knowing that, Jesus, you are here and knowing that you go with us and that you are at work in us each and every single day. Jesus, we love you. We trust you. We pray this all in your perfect and holy name. Amen. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel as well as well helps other people find this content and thereby helps them find and see Jesus as well. God be with you this day.